Hey, welcome in tonight. I am sports editor Lizzie Arbogast. Uh, across the screen from managing editor Santana Wood. Sorry, we're a little late tonight. Had some technical difficulties. We're getting worked out. Uh, just bear with us while we work from home and we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, but like I've said, you know, we're all just getting used to everything about this, especially the work from home situation. Um, thank you for bearing with us as we have some technical difficulties here and there. I'm sure that other people are encountering the same. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, as you guys know, our small staff is kind of working in overdrive to try to give you guys the latest information um, as quickly as we can. But also once it's verified and, and accurate, um, you know, we know that this uh, important coverage, uh, you know, we're committed to bringing to you, um, our local audience. And we appreciate the support of Russell Medical uh, Wound Care and Hyperbaric uh, Medicine. Definitely appreciate our sponsor and um, our audience for watching us. Um, Want to dig right into the biggest news of the day, which is Governor Kay Ivey did issue a stay at home order statewide, and that will go into effect beginning 5 p.m. Saturday. Um, and it will be in effect until April 30th. This means that you must stay at your house except for essential activities, such as going to the grocery store, obtaining necessary supplies, um, medical supplies, fuel or services, um, our medical procedures, automobile repairs, education-related services, things of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. There is kind of a long list of things that are still considered essential um, that will be open. Uh, things that you can do, um, you know, worship services are still allowed, in including weddings and funerals, but they must be limited to 10 or fewer. Uh, the drive-by or drive-in um, worship services that you've seen, those are still allowed, but people now must stay inside their vehicles and people within those vehicles must each be, must be from the same family. Um, and you can also still engage in some outdoor activity as long as it's 10 people or less. Yeah, glad they clarified that on the um, drive-in worship services as well. I know a lot of people had concerns that, um, you know, some people getting out of their cars during that sort of thing, but um, those rules have changed at this time. And, you know, there is that long list of essential businesses, um, and you can find that complete order on all of our websites to reference that. Um, also, in some other news, as of April 2nd, the coronavirus is now considered the third leading cause of death in the United States behind heart disease and cancer. Um, and this is based on averages of the top 15 leading causes of death in the United States in the current COVID-19 deaths. Um, yeah, and you know, I think this all kind of goes hand in hand. The big thing is just to stay at home and you can't, if you can, I mean, we all know that you've got to go to the grocery store, that you've got to go uh, get your prescriptions and things like that. Um, but this is really important that you're staying at home, staying within your family group, uh, those kinds of things. And this is going to be punishable by law. You know, we've already talked about the Alex City PD um, has been cracking down um, on these kinds of things already. Yeah, and you know, we also learned today that Tallahassee Mayor Johnny Hammock did um, announce a city curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., and that will begin Monday. Um, yeah, and also we just heard right before the show started that Dadeville's also enacted something similar, but we do have a little uh, clip that we want to show you from a press conference that Johnny Hammock had this morning, so uh, we will check that out now. Never went up. Uh, took office in 2016 would I have ever thought that I would be speaking to you about this today but this is uh, unprecedented times that call for unprecedented measures effective April the 6th Monday at 10 p.m. Uh, we will be going into a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. every day the safety of our citizens this, this benefits us the most at this time so, as the mayor stated, we'll enact it a 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Of course, uh, essential employees, employees of businesses that are traveling to and from work, there will be some exemptions in that. You know. I want to encourage everyone to practice their social distancing. All 
All right. So we definitely appreciate, um, you know, that Johnny Hammock is trying to uh, kind of take the lead here, um, you know, and, and doing something like that. I do believe that our um, reporter Cliff Williams is working up a story about Dadeville as well. So we have some more details there, but both of those are from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, and one thing that we obviously always talk about, but definitely want to stress today is those numbers are going up rapidly. Um, as of 6.30 p.m. tonight, the positive numbers across the state has increased to 1,529, and that is an increase of more than 200 since our 10 a.m. report. Yeah, continuing, continuing to climb, and I think that that is why Governor Ivey um, issued that stay-at-home order today in order to um, Make sure people are really taking this seriously at this point. Um, the Alabama Department of Public Health is also giving more detailed reports for each county at this time, um, including the confirmed cases, total tests, reported deaths, and those who died from the illness from each county. Um, and those statistics locally, uh, Tallapoosa County has 20 confirmed cases at this time, um, 46 total tests, one reported death, and one confirmed to have died from the illness. Elmore County has 19 confirmed cases at this time, 284 tests and zero deaths. Coosa County, six confirmed cases at this time, 17 tests and zero deaths. Yeah, and across the state, again, that um, confirmed number is 1,529. That does include 9,601 tests. Um, it does seem like the ADPH is updating their number of tests a little bit more frequently because that number has also increased since our morning report, um, but don't know how often uh, trying to look into that. Uh, there are 39 reported deaths and 21 to um, ho who have been confirmed to have died from the illness. Um, and it just, just again, to kind of reiterate that that once someone dies and they think it's from the illness, it then has to go through sort of an investigative process um, to be sure. Uh, so we'll try to get those numbers out to you guys twice a day as usual. Uh, we're gonna take just a quick break um, and then we'll be back to talk about some local news for the day. At Russell Medical Wound Care and Hyperbaric Medicine, we want you to know we're open. We take COVID-19 seriously and have put precautions in place for the safety and health of our patients. Don't delay treatment. Wound duration lasting more than 30 days is less likely to heal naturally. We treat all types of wounds, cuts, and burns, so intervene early. Wound care is critical. Call us today. All right, well, welcome back again. I'm Lizzie Arbogast, sports editor at Tallapoosa Publishers, along with Santana Wood, managing editor. Uh, we've been talking, obviously, about the big news for the day, which was Governor Kay Ivey putting in a statewide stay-at-home order, which goes into effect 5 p.m. Saturday. Also talked a little bit of numbers, and now we want to get into some uh, local county news. Yeah, some local news. Um, you know, the Small Business Administration's Paycheck Protection Program did begin today and applicants can submit requests through June 30th. Um, and these loans are at a set are set at a fixed 1% interest rate. And the main purpose is to, you know, help businesses pay their employees, among other certain things during this time, um, to kind of help alleviate um, those issues during this time. Yeah, and I know that uh, River Bank and Trust has already um, begun uh, accepting those applications and filing through those. So obviously that's going to help a lot of people um, in our small communities. There are a lot of small businesses um, in and around Tallapoosa and Elmore County. Um, also in Elmore County, uh, the commission has invested $65,000 to expand their broadband and hotspot access. Um, to the public uh, in the county. Uh, Commissioner Bart Mercer said the new hotspot locations will be accessible in the coming weeks. Um, and there's gonna be an interactive map uh, that you're seeing on your screen now um, that you can um, see where the proposed hotspots are and where they are available. Yeah, some uh, myth versus fact for you guys tonight. We like to share things like this with you as you know, there are so a lot of rumors and uh, things like that going on. Um, one myth that we have seen out there is parcels from China can spread the coronavirus. You know, getting something, uh, maybe you ordered something from China and maybe you're worried about it um, giving you the coronavirus. Uh, but this is not true. The CDC did explain that because of the 
poor uh, survivability of the coronavirus on surfaces, there is a low risk of spread from products or packaging um, that has been shipped from uh, over a period of days or weeks at those ambient temperatures that that's not possible. Yeah, and I think they've done kind of a breakdown of what um, surfaces it lasts the longest on. I think, you know, plastic was up to a couple of three days, cardboard uh, 48 hours. So um, obviously things that are coming from China are taking longer than 48 hours to get here. Um, so it's okay, you know, we can still order uh, the things that we need um, offline during this time. Yeah, you know, another one I had seen is that, you know, you shouldn't wear a mask. And the CDC actually did release today that, um, you know, people, just regular people going to the grocery store or whatever, should try to use some sort of cloth covering um, over their mouth um, whenever they do go out. Um, you know, not the official N95 mask. Those are important to reserve for healthcare workers. Right. But um, if it's possible for you to wear some sort of, you know, homemade cloth covering, that that is best according to the CDC. Yeah, and I think just anything that you can do to protect yourself, even though it is a stay-at-home order, you know, people, like I said, do have to get their essentials. Um, so they need that. Um, always want to end on a feel-good story. Uh, so one thing that happened in Alexander City and has been going on, um, the Young Acres neighborhood, I'm sorry, uh, are the folks there are going to the ends of their driveways uh, with their families to pray um, each evening. They just step outside around 8 p.m. again just with their immediate family members um, and have a short prayer. They have flashlights and it's just sort of a way where, especially when we have to be so far apart, it's a way to say, hey, we're, we're kind of all together in this. Um, and you see your neighbors even if you have to yell at them, yell at them from across the street. Yeah, I think good for them to, you know, like you said, get some really distance, uh, but still some interaction and um, really a way for them to connect and also for families to come together um, as a family unit um, during this time and uh, say some prayers as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it is a tough time and we're all trying to get through it. And I know there's a lot of questions about uh, the stay at home, home order and things like that. I did speak to an official um, today who said that they would be clarifying some of those questions and hope to have that out before five o'clock um, tomorrow when the effect goes in order in terms of what actually is essential, what's not. Um, and some people have reached out to us on Facebook to ask, hey, am I essential? Uh, so feel free to reach out. We've got contacts that we can reach out to um, and at least try to get an answer for you um, as quickly as possible. Yeah, we're happy to help. And, you know, we're really happy to provide this coverage to you guys and continue to uh, be a public service for you during this time. Um, it's so important to be able to have a local news source that you can trust. And we really pride ourselves in being that for you. And um, we want to thanks again uh, the support from our sponsor, Russell Medical Wound and Hyperbaric Medicine, um, and all of our viewers for watching and readers and we will continue to come to you every weeknight here at 7 p.m. to share with you the latest coronavirus coverage um, and give you daily updates as well. As well as over the weekend, we will continue to post those twice daily updates. So thank you for coming to us for news, and we appreciate everyone. And stay safe out there. Continue to social distance. Again, I'm Santana Wood, Managing Editor, alongside Lizzie Arbogast, Sports Editor. Have a good night. Thanks, guys.